guys, welcome back to Ashart Books. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books I've read so far in April. I know it's a little early to do a part one wrap up, but I've already read quite a few books this month, so I kind of wanted to go ahead and talk about them before I started forgetting details because that seems to happen pretty quickly. So um, I had a really good reading month so far. I've given a lot of these five stars and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about them. The first book I read this month was Tangled by Emma Chase. Um, this one was one of the books I hadn't read from her yet, obviously, <laughs> and um, it was really funny. I think I give this four stars, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this one is interesting because it takes place solely from the male perspective, which I think can be really hard to get right. Um, and I think she did well. I think she did really well, actually. I really liked it. Um, I will say when you're reading from a male perspective in this one, it was a little bit crude at times, but probably honest if we're going to be honest about it. So, um, but I really liked it. It follows Drew, who's kind of this big hotshot at his job. And then they get a new, um, kind of, uh, person at the job who is just coming out of college and she is going to be the love interest and um, what's her name? Catherine. So those two are just kind of like butting heads the whole time. They're so smart. They're so similar to each other. I think um, very stubborn and um, it was a really fun kind of battle of wills. Um, if you like Emma Chase, definitely check this one out. I believe this was her first series. I also this month read Twisted, which is book two, but I read it from the library. So that's why I don't have it, but I gave that one four stars as well. Definitely really fun reads. They're pretty short, so you can get through them really quick and really hilarious. Emma Chase really, really knows how to bring on the funny, so definitely really cute. I honestly can't remember what order I read all of these in, but I'm just gonna kind of talk about them in a general order. But the next one is um, Minx by Julia Quinn. I mentioned this one in my uh, favorites for the first quarter because it's part of that Splendid trilogy from her. So the first one is Splendid, the second one is Dancing at Midnight, and this is the third one, Minx. I really liked this. I gave it five out of five. It was one of my favorite historicals for so far this year. Um, it was just really fun. Julia Quinn really knows how to mix lightheartedness, funny, sweet, but also has like a really kind of heart-wrenching storyline that kind of runs throughout the book as well. Um, so this one follows our main character who you have actually met in the first two books. So you kind of know him, you love him, and you're kind of like ready for him to get his happily ever after. And our heroine, um, is named uh, Henry. Her name's Henrietta, but she goes by Henry. And um, our male hero was Dunford, William Dunford. And um, so basically, Dunford is kind of a city boy, but somehow he inherits this estate out in Cornwall, goes out there to, you know, he just got this, so he's gonna figure it out. And basically, it comes with Henry because she was a ward of the previous owner. And she is not happy with him basically stealing her home from her and the first part of the book basically is her trying to scare the crap out of him enough of this country living country life that he will hightail it back to the city and leave her in peace um it was really funny henry is such a sassy spunky character she wears breeches because she's like if i'm gonna work on the farm i'm not gonna wear a dress and it was just really really lovely i loved the push and pull between the two characters and it was just very enjoyable the next book I read this month was A Bollywood Affair by Sonali Dev. This one was so good. Everyone kept talking about this one and um, I think I recently hauled it. I picked it up when I was at a Polycon and they were all right. It was so refreshing. It was such a different story. This basically follows our main character Millie who is um, basically she was married to a person, a guy, when she was four in kind of like a very small Indian village. And she still firmly believes in her grandmother, her nanny, uh, that her husband is going to one day come for her. But she's, I believe she's 21 or no, 22, 23, I think in this book. And she's never heard a word from him. Now they, she has heard from her husband's family and she's like helped take care of the family home and all this stuff, but not a word from the husband. And so she's kind of trying to finally start living her life. So she's in um, the States. She's in, I think it's, I don't remember actually where in the States, but she's somewhere in the States going to graduate school. She went to college. She kind of has been trying to use like, oh, I'm going to be better for my husband to kind of let her grandmother get her education. And she's, that's really important to her. And then our hero of this story is named Samir. And Samir is actually 
the brother of the husband. And I'm gonna let you guys kind of read to figure out how they get entwined, but it was so different. Basically, it's them kind of, well, mostly Millie figuring out who she is and who she is with, with or without the marriage. And Samir has a lot going on in his life and he is actually like a Hollywood, um, I think he's like a director type thing. So he's very famous and he's had a really interesting backstory that they go into this book. And I just thought the character development was fantastic. I love learning about the Indian culture. Um, I, it was something I didn't know too much about. I loved how food was really worked into this book a lot. It had me craving Indian food a lot during this book because they constantly are talking about like cooking or cooking different items and that was definitely part of the storyline. If you're looking for a contemporary romance that is just really refreshing, really different, um, but also really sweet and definitely had just a very swoony romance, definitely pick up a, a Bollywood affair. Okay, the next one I read was Ride Hard by Laura Kay. This is the first one in the Raven Riders series. Um, this is a motorcycle romance, which sometimes does not work for me. There's been a couple I've really loved and there's been some I just haven't. Um, this one came as a suggestion from uh, Instagram and I, I think a short story in the series came out recently, so it kind of was brought up again. This is the first one though and I really, really enjoyed it. I give this one five stars as well. It's been a month of five stars. I don't know if I said, but I gave a Bollywood Affair five stars as well. I've just been having really good luck with books um, and a lot of recommendations I've got. Everyone is just so on point. So um, anyways, this book follows our main character, Haven, who basically was kind of taken out of this really awful situation by the motorcycle club because this club is kind of very different from a lot of other ones. Their whole kind of premise behind the club is to help other people, kind of take them out of bad situations, give them a way to kind of get out of these situations. And um, so it follows her and our main character is the president of the motorcycle club, uh, Dare and um, Dare Kenyon, and so it follows them. So she comes from this bad situation. She's at the kind of clubhouse, and basically it's just about their relationship. Both of them have a lot of baggage, and particularly Haven has a lot of things she has to deal with, and she really hasn't been able to kind of live up until now. Um, I thought they did this one really well. I loved the writing by Laura Kay. I thought that the heroes were alpha in a way that was believable. They were very caring, very kind of, they were alpha in the way that they were kind of overbearing in a way, um, but they weren't douchebags because sometimes there's a very fine line with motorcycle romances I find, and sometimes it's crossed. And I didn't feel like it was in this book. Um, I definitely really want to read the next two, but if you're looking for a good motorcycle romance, for sure, check this one out. It was super cute. Um, it wasn't too dark. I think sometimes they can get like way dark and this one to me wasn't. So it was definitely a very enjoyable read and I do plan on reading the next two in the series just as soon as I can get my hands on them. Next is The Highwayman by Kerrigan Byrne. This is another one. I gave five stars. It was so good. I think it's probably my favorite historical I've read so far. I hadn't read this when I made my favorites list <laughs> um, or it would have been on there, but this one I kept seeing around, uh, but I, I wasn't sure if I'd like it because they, everyone kept describing it as amazing, but kind of a darker historical. And that's not always my thing. I don't tend to love that. I usually like the lighter, but I decided to give it a go and I really loved it. Um, it's not too dark. So this book takes place in England, but it kind of starts in Scotland in the Highlands and the prologue of this book, guys, will gut punch you and it will grab your heartstrings and run off with them and you will just not be able to stop. Um, I listened to part of this on audio and I'm really glad I did. It really helped with like the accents and the kind of brogue and really made them kind of come to life. So you follow your two main characters. The first one is Dorian Blackwell and he is just known at throughout England as this like kind of just not a tyrant, but basically he's got a lot of power. He's not a nice guy, supposedly, and he does very bad things. Um, and he's just got this really big reputation around England, or London, not England, London. Um, and then you have your main char female character, which is Farah. Why can I not remember any names? Farah, who is, she's got a, a lot of backstory as well. Dorian and her both have very, very kind of tumultuous pasts. 
and they're a little bit twisted together in a really interesting way. Um, so Farrah is like about 27. She's kind of given up on love in a way. She just thinks she's gonna kind of bypass that. Um, but she's working for Scotland Yard as a bookkeeper. So she kind of has a very interesting life in that sense. And her and Dorian meet and their stories kind of take off from there. I'm gonna let you jump in a little bit uh, blind because I didn't know very much about this at all and I think it was better there's a lot of twists and turns in here there's a bit of a mystery aspect and I think it's better to go in not knowing or like expecting anything um, but I highly recommend this don't be kind of put off by the dark tone uh, it was dark in the sense of like it did have darker subject matter but it wasn't to me like overwhelming it was still a really pleasant read I couldn't stop reading it so good this one also is the beginning of a series and I cannot wait to read the rest. I just need to get my hands on them. I've heard through the grapevine that um, Book Outlet has them. So I might need to place a little order because I really want to continue such lovable characters. And the last couple of books I read were all in the same series. So I reread the Titan series by Jennifer Armentrout, which is a spinoff of the Covenant series, um, which is all about Greek mythology greek gods and it was so good so i had already read the first two but i reread them and then i read the third one and then i'm currently reading the fourth one i haven't finished it yet but this is the only one i actually have in paperback copy the rest i read on my kindle and they are all so good i gave i think the first one five the second one four the third one five and i haven't finished this one second book it had a bit of second book syndrome in it but still really really good so i'll follow seth who's your main character um, who was in the Covenant series, but now he's the main character and Josie. And I just, I love it. Like it, it, like I said, it has Greek mythology and gods and it has like a boarding school setting. So if that's your thing, this is the series for you. Um, basically it's kind of hard to explain the series to be honest, but if you like those aspects, I would definitely say check it out. Jennifer Armentrout does amazing with kind of anything that's like supernatural or fantasy based. And I think that's like her forte to me. Like those are my favorites from her. The Lux series is probably my favorite, but this Titan series is really up there. I really love it. It has enough action, but also like the romance storyline. Um, I love the Greek mythology. I just think it's so good. Um, so this is the fourth one. I only, I'm only a little bit into it. I haven't got that far, but I intend to finish it. So you'll probably hear me talk about it more in the next video, but I did read those three books as well. Okay, so I am reading, currently reading one more book, and that was, it's the first book by Christy Caldwell. I cannot remember the name of it right now, but um, it's really good so far. It's a historical romance, and um, I was super excited to see that it was on Kindle Unlimited, like the whole series, so I'm currently reading that, and it's really, really good. I'm like halfway through, so I'm having a really good month so far. I have really not liked not not liked anything um and i think i'm getting better at picking books i like because pretty much the past couple of months have been good reading months so i guess i'm getting better <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching if you like please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time